Hi there, in this uh, video we are going to talk about how you can import data within information system. So uh, the thing that I will show you today is very useful when you are dealing with uh, online acquisition channels and can be about uh, anything. It can be about uh, importing data within a CRM, so that's what I'm going to show you uh, today. Uh, with the example of Motic, but it can be as well about uh, advertising program, like you have millions of ads uh, to add within the system, so you will go for uh, imports. Uh, it can be about uh, marketplaces, for example, you have many uh, product sheet information that you need to upload, and of course you're not going to upload them uh, one by one. So the typical uh, use case, let's imagine here that I have, uh, like I have 200 contacts, those 200 contacts, I'm not going to just add them uh, one by one, uh, like this, um, filling in each uh, of the, the product sheet, it's uh, humanly impossible. And even if you do it humanly um, in a human way, let's say in a manual way, well, it, it's going to take you ages. So it's it's not good. It's going to destroy your resource. And it's not good at all. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can import uh, many contacts here in uh, in Motic based on uh, on a database that you already have, or you can already clean it. A little bit. Um, there are different ways that you can do it. Um, where so it's specific, of course, to each uh, solution that you're gonna uh, look for. For so example, here, if you look for uh, Motic, you will go through the documentation of Motic about everything which deal with how to import contacts. And most of the time, they will give you uh, two ways of doing it. It's either uh, you do it thanks to a, a CSV file that you will upload uh, through the UI. So in general, it's just talk about uh, import or uh, either you use uh, the command line interface and this is where they are giving you the instruction in order to do it in the command line interface. The main difference between those two methods to approach between the command line interface and uh, the one of the UI is that the command line interface will give you more flexibility. So for a developer that's, uh, that's better because they can clearly see uh, what is the name of uh, the error messages if there is one where it's actually in the UI sometime it's not specific to Matic, it's, it's in general in general you get less features through the UI but uh, just for the sake of this example I'm going to show it uh, through the, the UI so um, here is my Matic um, I want to import some contacts so let's imagine that you have other databases within your organization and yet you want to import them within the system in my case I'm just using this uh, online uh, generator uh, fake data uh, that I found out. Um, you can just have a look at it like this. So if I go back on uh, regenerate, oops, not regenerate. Um, um, where was I? I was at, um, yeah, probably that was the one. Uh, that's, a, that's a great website, just find uh, like this by mistake. So uh, you can in fact uh, specify the type of data that you would like the system to generate uh, for, um, um, let's say for test purposes. And uh, so in my case, just say, okay, I want the company name, I want the name of the people, I want the email, and then uh, you can just select how many rows. Oops, sorry, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm just gonna, uh, okay, I cannot go, sorry, you have not allowed to change the number of generate, this is a demo, so okay, no problem. Um, so here in my case, I'm just gonna go for 100 rows, I'm gonna go for a CSV file because I'm more comfortable with a CSV file, here you can, uh, insert the delimiter character for each of those values and I'm going to click on generate so it's going to generate me a file with uh, company as the first column, names as the second one, email as the third one. Okay, so here is uh, how the file look like, uh, at least starting to look like and once it's finished it will uh, provide me with a CSV file and if it doesn't I will just go like this and we just copy this part out. I'm just going to open like a LibreOffice Calc. Where is it? LibreOffice Calc. I'm just going to copy and paste. I really like uh, Calc from LibreOffice because it allows you a lot of flexibility. It allows you to use a regular expression. If you don't get a file such as this one, if you get a file such as this one, uh, look on each time about which uh, character is used in order to separate the different data. So here you can clearly see that this is a pipe character. So as a result, you just click on other and you just add the uh, pipe character. Okay, and as you can see, yep, it does turn the work uh, pretty well. Okay, so now I get my data, which are um, which is the re represent the database. As you can see, I'm getting one hundred of those. And um, all the time, what you need to know is, in fact, when you do the import, what are the different uh, fields which are expected and how are they named. 
Um, so here I already answered the one manually and in fact I can click here on uh, export and when I click on export in fact it's going to give me the pattern which is expected by the solution and uh, in most of the case it works uh, this way so here I'm just going to open it up and as you can see yep, this is what the system is expecting at the end right it's expecting the ID, the points, the last active, the title, the first name, the last name and and so on and so forth. So this is really interesting. So I'm just gonna take this part out. Okay, I'm just gonna remove it. I'm just gonna move back now to my uh, old folder. So I insert one above and I'm gonna insert another one. Yeah, like this. Okay, and whoops, what did I do wrong? I got nothing left here. So I'm just gonna oops, go back over here. Let's Okay, and if we just copy this part, and if I now move back over here, oops. Okay, um, so here as you can see, um, the template of Motic expect an ID. I don't have any ID, I don't have any point, I don't have any last active, I don't have any title. So I have a first name, so I know that I need at least to enter the first name. I have the email and I get the company, so I know that I need at least those three lines to be filled in. So I can definitely just go for this one. So here in LibreOffice, you just go for Shift, uh, CTRL, and then the down arrow. And as a result, you can just, and if you want to move up, you just uh, press CTRL and uh, up arrow. And um, so those are the emails. So I'm quite good here. If I say, okay, email, okay, 100% good. So Nan is waiting for first name and the family name. So here I delete those data. Okay, here the company. So company, steps like this. I just picked it up. And this is the company here. Okay, and this is where it starts to be fun because as you can see here they're waiting for the first name and the last name, though I don't have two fields. So if I just enter uh, everything within the first name, it will be considered as the first name. And if I enter everything within the, okay, you got it, it will be considered as the last name. So in fact, I'm gonna split this given this given column and uh, you have several ways that you can uh, that you can go for here. Um, I am not even sure about which one I'm gonna I'm gonna choose here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it like this. Maybe I'm gonna use a regex for that. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do it like this. Yes, I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna go over here. So this is Guinea. Guinea support regex as well. I'm just more comfortable within Guinea than in Calc. So in Calc, actually, if you do CTRLH, uh, you will see that you have the possibility to tick here the regular expression, which is very, very powerful. And here in my case, in fact, what I expect to do is that the space are changed by a tab. So I'm just gonna go for um, CTRLH here. I'm just gonna say, okay, every time that you are gonna see a space, you're gonna change it by a tab so tab in regular expression is uh, empty slash t and then i just look for oops for um change everything and i'm gonna say um in the document you change me everything and as you can see da, 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 everything has been changed by a tab so as a result now if i take these parts out and if i move back on my previous file which was this one, this one, depths, depths, and I do this. Okay, it's gonna tell me, okay, what do you expect to do? And this is where I can say, okay, so it's every time that you're gonna face a tab, you consider it as two separate columns. And as you can see, da, 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 everything has been uh, down seems kind of correctly. Uh, of course, it doesn't work all the time because if you have a first name which is composed of uh, two first names, let's say with a space, well, you need to take that as an exception. But now I have my file which is uh, which is ready. Um, out of the different uh, function from calc that you may have to use, uh, you can play with uh, 
length sometimes is very useful in order to calculate the total amount of character of a given uh, cell. Uh, you also use a lot the concatenation. So uh, let's imagine that you like to say, hey, this and also, so I would like to have a state. Let, let's imagine that I would like go back to my initial state, let's say. Uh, and then you get the Elia sales the first name plus one because you use the concatenate uh, function with the imposter. Okay, great. So once you are finished, uh, you don't screw this up here. You just save it as a CSV file. Okay, so you say my database.csv. Okay, I can precise formatic and you put it not as an ODS, you put it as a CSV. Uh, main reason is that if uh, in LibreOffice format they are adding some extra character, if you don't want it to be run. So here they're asking us for the delimiter uh, parameter. Well, you can leave the comma if you want. After all, a CSV file is a comma separated file. So my database, only the active sheet was saved, which is okay. That's typically the case with CSV file. Okay, and now you can just go over here and click on import. Okay, then you select the document that you want. In my case, my database. Um, here I leave it as it is and let's upload it. So here it's telling me, okay, match the column from the imported file from Motex contact. So I'm pretty confident here that it's uh, that is good contact owner is probably uh, for, uh, let's say, Motic information. So here it means that I'm the one to who the data belongs somehow, at least the one who is in control of, of those data as a salesperson and then contact segment. I can, um, I can just leave it. I mean, it really depends on what you want. Let's imagine that it was B2B contacts and, uh, and let's, uh, let's import it. So, uh, some required fields are missing. You must map the field company name. So uh, I may have found it, uh, the given bug. So in fact, uh, what I did is that I went on the, I went on the search engine and I found out the following information that uh, seems that actually the field is not named company, but uh, company name, which is kind of weird because the original file was mentioning company, uh, just company and not company name. So I just modify my uh, CSV file, we imported it. So I just changed the name here and put company name. So all the time when you have a, an error with your uh, CSV file or your import, you always look at the error and you try to guess what's happening. And this is what will make you very involved in your organization. So let's now click on import. Um, so here the thing, okay, import is in progress. So it means that the system is uh, trying to make uh, the import. Uh, you can just click as well and finish on the background, which will mean um, that um, if you have many to import, it will take um, it will take some time that you will never see. I mean, you will still continue to use uh, the system without any issues and it will still import them within the background. So here's telling me that um, row number 102 uh, is there are more than 100 uh, data, so it has not been imported 100 rows, and there are no data on row 103, so I don't mind. And he's telling me, okay, that um, 999 um, rows have been created, two have been ignored. Um, it's always interesting to know about which one have been uh, which one have been ignored. So always look back uh, to your uh, file over here. So. So that it means that for me, in my case, I have one which have been uh, ignored. It's always interesting to know which one it is. I uh, view the detail of my database. So here, as you can see, I got my um, I got my file published. So um, I think the best thing would be to know which one it is ignored. Okay, not sure which one have been ignored. So I will need to investigate that out a little bit more in detail later on. But here, as you can see, I got all the contacts um, information which have been imported. They all get automatically the ID, so I don't have to uh, take care about it. And then normally they have a company uh, name identified. So where, where, where is it? Um, so this contact is Honorato Robertson and company. Where can I find this information? So company or oh, company, here it is. Okay, and of course, I guess that's gonna create, yeah, um, 
a company card information. And that's everything that I wanted to show you about how you can import data within a, an information system. So it's all about um, getting your, your database, cleaning your database, then make your database fit the expectation of the data feed for the information system that you're gonna work with, then you import it. Uh, if you have too many data, import it within the background and then double check uh, which information has not been imported and uh, always check that the information has been uh, properly imported. Hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.